evening, and welcome to Beware of Spoilers. I am Adam. I'm realizing now that when Josie and I recorded next week's episode of Exploring Hyperspace Lanes, I plugged this, um, but the episode doesn't go up until Wednesday, which is silly of me um, to do on a plethora of levels. Anyway, hi, how are you? It's uh, Saturday. Um, my theater is back to being at full, full strength. The power play is over, and we're back to having a complete, you know, lineup at the theater, so I can actually see all the movies that I've been wanting to see for a few weeks. Um, this is one that I could have saw back at, um, what's it called, back at, uh, Hamptons International Film Festival, but I opted not to, and instead went for She Said, thinking that would be better for content. Um, that decision did not exactly pan out. It's not, was not a better movie, was not better for content, and yet here we are. Um, seeing this now. Okay, go ahead, just go ahead and cut me right the fuck off there, buddy. Um, but, I've now seen Women Talking, which got nominated for Best Picture, which means I think there are just three, two movies that were nominated for Best Picture that I haven't seen yet. Um, in this case, um, I have not yet seen Living, which, Living wasn't nominated for Best Picture, but I'm seeing Living tomorrow. Bill Nye was nominated for Best Actor for Living, um, which I'm seeing tomorrow. Um, it's a, hang on, um, but, seeing women talking, uh, the other one I haven't seen, I haven't seen Triangle of Sadness, and I haven't seen All Quiet on the Western Front, which, All Quiet on the Western Front's an easy one to rectify, but I have to, uh, I'm still doing Sundance, um, viewing, I'm, I'm gonna be watching a few shorts, uh, programs tonight, and then, uh, we'll be moving into that, but, I'm watching this movie, and, uh, I've seen, I've now seen women talking, and I think that if we were to look at this movie, I'm, like, now having watched this, I'm, I understand the issues people had with the fact that Sarah Pauly didn't get nominated for Best Director. Um, the script could have used a little work. I have a problem with characters, um, there's an old thing from, from an old Marvel comic meme that went around a few years ago where, um, they took the, the characters in a, in a comic who said something that was the official comic that was put out by Marvel, was written by Brian Michael Bendis, then in one, one iteration that had the characters exactly as it was printed, um, then in the second one they took the characters and swapped them all around, and, um, and it was all the same, you know, the same dialogue in the same order, it's just the characters are all swapped around and, and interpreted to different people. And then they used different characters. And it's like, and, and that's the problem with his writing style, is that no one has a unique voice. And I think that, by and large, as I'm watching this movie, I'm sitting there and I'm like, if I take any line of dialogue from this, and that's the general rule of thumb, is that you should be able to take any line of dialogue um, and without using something to indicate a relationship to someone else, you should be able to point out who said it based on um, on, on where they're coming from or anything like that. And I feel like a lot of the characters talk kind of the same um, and, and have the same kind of, you know, mannerisms and all that. And I feel like that, that's kind of my only real issue, but that's, that's a script issue. That's not a directing issue. I think the movie is very well directed. Um, I'm surprised it didn't get nominated for, uh, for Best Direction, actually. Um, because it was pretty well done. Um, it's a, it's a haunting movie about, um, dealing with systemic sexual abuse and systemic, um, abuse of power. Um, and I think that the, the movie does a great job of really hitting that on the head kind of perfectly to the point where it's like they, everything about it is, like, and then on top of it, too, you have these women who are... Ultimately, the movie is, you know, the, these women live in a religious colony um, somewhere in the United States. And as part of living in this religious colony, they, um, 
they are nightly um, or or routinely. I don't know if it's nightly, but routinely they are uh, gastric sedative, and then um, in their sleep they're raped. And when they woke, when they wake up, and they're like, "Oh shit, something happened," and they 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 talk about it. They're told, um, you know, no, that's not what what happened. That's not, you know, it, it, you, you, it's a ghost. You imagined it. Satan did it. It's not anything like that. Eventually, they catch one of the guys in the act, and when they catch the guy, uh, the whole thing kind of falls apart for all the men in the community, and it comes apart at the seams, and everyone's implicated, and the entire thing is kind of this big. Uh, it falls in a big legal mess, and all the men have left the colony because they're all in jail or bailing each other out. Um, meanwhile, the women are left behind, and the women are now forced to reckon with this new reality. This new reality that they had been lied to all their lives about what's been happening to them. The fact that everyone knew they have been lied to um, all their lives about what had been happening to them. And that they have to, you know, what do they do? Do they do nothing? Do they stay? Um, or, do, well, do nothing is stay. Uh, do they stay and fight? Or do they leave? When they hold a vote, it comes down to a tie between stay and fight or leave. Um, so then the movie is them debating, do we stay and fight or do we leave? And whatever decision they make, we'll stay for the entire, uh, for the entire colony. Um, and it is, the debate is so well done. I think that that's kind of what this hinges on in the way that, like, a movie like 12 Angry Men kind of hinges on the, the debate aspect, and that's the entire movie, is them, these jurors in this room, slowly coming to terms with what's going on, and, and, you know, and, and coming to the conclusion of whether or not the man should hang, or, you know, it's the same kind of thing here, where they have to make the decision, and they all have to come to terms with their own realities, and their own, you know, everything that goes into living through this trauma, and, uh, I, it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, this is one of those movies that, number one, there should be a category at the Oscars, Best Ensemble Cast. Um, and I've said this before, I've been saying this for years, I want to say we can go back, I've been, I've been calling for a Best Ensemble Cast Oscar, going as far, who, who was the one where it's like everyone was in the movie, but everyone was so good, um, that you can't single out any one person as the lead, oh, I think Straight Outta Compton was one of the first ones where I was like, there should be a Best Ensemble Cast, where everyone's great and no one person you know, stands above as this is the lead, quote unquote. I think here we would have to say the lead is, is Rooney Mara, but it's just, everyone in the movie does such a great job, and and um, uh, and, and it's great. I mean, Ben Winshaw is great in his role as August. I mean, it's everything about this is so well done, even down to like the way the mannerisms work with the characters, in terms of like the, the way they talk to each other and the way that it, the 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 misogyny and the and, and and their own subservience in this society is so deeply ingrained that even though the only man who's there is is August and he's there to take notes and and, and, and all of that, um, the 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 fact that he's the only one there, uh, they're still policing self policing that language and all of that. It, it's everything about it is so is so well done. Um, and then it's like, and, and the thing is too, it's like, it's well done, but in a way where for the first half of the movie or so, I'm like, oh, this is, you know, it's good, um, but it's not, I don't, like, I, I was like, I didn't think it was anything good. And then you get to the end, and it's just the, the, the haunting rendition of Near My God to the end, um, with all, with all of that happening, and, um, the, the, the woman who went home. Uh, Jesse Buckley goes home to her husband and uh, she comes back the next day and she's been beaten um, and uh, her mother goes and sits next to her and she, she just it's just so heartbreaking and it's just oh my god that, that scene is so great at the end um, where it's just you know just it's there's no dialogue in it it's just silent and just she goes over and sits down next to her and she just kind of like like a little kid just kind of curls up, it's, it's so sad, um, 
it's it's such a great movie. I'm, I'm surprised this movie didn't get more, um, what's it called, more attention um, from the Academy Awards. Uh, and I think it does come down to, I think this is the movie that, once again, and, and I've heard a few places make this, this claim that if we want to make the Academy Awards into something, they should do more like the Super Bowl and make it into an all-day event and, and less like, you know, what it is. Where like you can do the technical awards in the morning or in the afternoon and then do the primetime awards at night and, you know, all of that. But, like, this is a movie where the color grading even even adds to the movie and, and, the, way the, co- and the way the movie is, is, is saturated out in blues is, is designed to... To, to add to the entire just the feeling that there's the not just the bleakness but the 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 ha, like how the characters view the situation is reflected in that um, as well as the use of lighting and all and, and uh, in a way we see in like we talked about it with Nope and with the Northmen uh, this is another movie that uses natural lighting and, and natural light sources um, which I think speaks a lot to you know cinema cinematography. Um, and all of that. Um, it's, it's such a well done movie. Um, I'm, I'm just so, just, like, like, it's one of those things, like, you watch it and you're like, oh my, like, it is, it's one of those things that you watch and you feel emotionally drained after and you're like, oh my god, I just need to, like, take a breath and sit down. Um, it, it is very well done. If you haven't seen Women Talking yet, um, go check it out. It's available in theaters now. It'll eventually make its way to streaming. Um, it, it's definitely worth a watch. Uh, the, um, I, I don't know. It's, it's one of those things, like, I, I watched it, and I'm like, this is just such a great and well done movie. I, I don't, um, I, I don't have anything really negative to say about it, besides that one thing about dialogue. And even then, it's like you can kind of pick out who's who. It just feels like more of a dialect than a dialogue issue, and even that's not really a, a problem. I mean, like it, it is a it's a great movie. If you haven't seen Women Talking yet, um, definitely go and check it out. And I think that like because of you know technically it came out last year, but I don't want it to be left off of a top ten list. So I think that we're gonna end up. I may. I think this year we're gonna amend the rules to the top ten because um, I. I as I was doing the top ten last year, I felt it wasn't really fair to do, um, what's it called, to do the top ten, you know, movies, and it has to be the premiere was within the calendar year, so it's like, well, that's not fair to movies that had a, theat- had a theatrical run and just didn't get to me, um, or movies that didn't get a, uh, what's it called, or movies that didn't get a, uh, what's it called, it's the, a, uh, you know, or movies that went to, uh, that had a, a festival premiere and then moved to theatrical, it, it's not right to them to have gotten omitted because they were, you know, just out of contention, so I think that in a real, in a, in a very real sense, both Flea and, um, Macbeth could have been contenders for the top ten, um, but uh, because of the way that I structured the rules going into the year, we didn't really get a chance to um, to talk about them. Um, but yeah, I think that just about wraps it up um, for for women talking. If you haven't seen this movie yet, go check it out. Um, it's definitely worth watching, especially you know before the Academy Awards, you know, and, and, and all of that. It's definitely it's definitely worth checking this movie out. Um, the next movie up will be tomorrow. We have Living. We will also be doing a catch up on um, National Treasure: Edge of History. Uh, we'll be continuing with our coverage of that other show, The Last of Us, and Poker Face. We'll be picking up uh, with starting next week. Um, also, The Flash is coming back, so strap in for that. Um, and I think that just about covers it. If you want to keep track of what we're doing on not just this podcast, but on 30-Minute Reviews and on Exploring Hyperspace Land as well, we have a page up on the website that you can check, and I'll keep that reasonably updated. Uh, go to multipleworldproductions.com slash, um, slash calendar, and you'll be able to view uh, everything we have going on. Um, 
across all the podcasts with a schedule of release dates uh, well in advance, so that way you have the chance to uh, to, to see everything that we're going to do. But we'll wrap up there for today. Uh, so, until our next episode tomorrow, have a great rest of your week.